A tilt-wing, deflected slipstream V-stall designed and built by Canadair Limited, a subsidiary of General Dynamics. Liftoff occurs at approximately 35 knots, the aircraft climbing out steeply with the fuselage level. In conventional flight, the aircraft behaves as a typical turboprop. Seen here, it makes a low-level pass at 220 knots. It is extremely quiet in this mode. The 84 demonstrates its low-speed maneuverability during tight turns at 45 knots with the wing at 40 degrees. The aircraft pulls up to 2 Gs in a turn radius of under 200 feet. Note the tail propeller operating. At this speed, it provides pitch control in conjunction with the elevators. In hover, it provides all the pitch control but is stopped and aligned for conventional flight. The horizontal stabilizer is programmed to move with wing tilt to minimize longitudinal trim changes. Two standard T-53 Lycoming 1,500-shaft horsepower turboshaft engines power two interconnected 14-foot diameter fiberglass propellers. The interconnection ensures thrust symmetry in the event of an engine failure. A steep level fuselage approach is made for a short landing. After touchdown at around 45 knots, a combination of disking propellers and wheel brakes ensures a short ground roll. With the wing tilted up, the power lever is advanced to make a vertical ascent to hover. As in all modes of flight, the aircraft is controlled by the stick, rudder pedals, and power lever. To fly sideways, the stick is moved sideways to command differential propeller pitch instead of ailerons, as in conventional flight. The 84 can fly sideways up to 35 knots. To rotate the aircraft, rudder pedal movement controls the flap ailerons, which, being immersed in the slipstream, provide the necessary yawing moments. This transfer of control authority is obtained by means of a mechanical mixing box in the control circuit containing a series of cams which rotate with wing tilt. In this way, a given control input is translated to a command to the relevant control function. A thumb switch on the power lever selects wing tilt angle. Here the wing is tilted beyond the vertical to put the aircraft into reverse flight while the fuselage remains level. The 84 can fly backwards at up to 35 knots. The ability of the aircraft to fly sideways and backwards is a measure of its ability to perform hover turns in a wind while remaining on station and handle crosswinds during takeoff, transitions, and landings. Zero to 100 knots takes about eight seconds. The flying demonstration concludes with an inbound transition to a hover landing. The relative movement of the horizontal stabilizer with the tilting wing is clearly seen. A small reduction of power is required to complete the landing as the aircraft enters ground effect. In this short takeoff, the aircraft weighed 1,000 pounds more than its vertical takeoff weight. The two drop tanks were each water ballasted to approximately 900 pounds. Tanks were dropped both singly and in pairs, full and empty, at a variety of aircraft speeds and configurations to assess stores dropping capability. Note the tail propeller stopped and aligned in conventional flight. Two full tanks are dropped at 160 knots. The same drop is viewed in slow motion where the tanks are seen to separate cleanly while the 84 remains in steady flight. This is the first live simulated rescue by a V-stall aircraft. As the 84 hovered at a height of 40 feet, a light sling was lowered to the man on the ground. After attaching the sling about himself, he was hoisted into the aircraft. He reported that at no time during the operation was there enough turbulence to cause concern. In fact, the area directly beneath the aircraft was relatively calm.
During gun firing trials, the CL-84 operated from a 70-foot diameter pad at the Nicolette firing range 100 miles downriver from Montreal. A standard General Electric 7.62 millimeter minigun pod was rigidly mounted on an under-fuselage hard point. The pod contained 1,500 rounds, and the firing rate was 6,000 rounds per minute. The first firing runs were made in conventional flight at 200 knots. The target is 14 and a half feet square. A simple reflector sight was used. Case ejection in slow motion at 200 knots. The tracer frequency was one in five. The camera lens used shows true pilot view. A 45 knot run with the wing at 40 degrees resulted in 84% possible hits on target. The steadiness of the 84 as a gun platform is well illustrated in this cockpit camera sequence. Positioning for 40-foot hover, a thousand feet from the target. Seventy-one percent hits achieved in this mode. The steadiness in hover is well displayed. Aircraft control is manual. There is no autopilot. In the next sequence, the aircraft uses its ability to remain on station in hover while tilting the fuselage to aim the gun. Using the targets as range limits, the 84 is first aligned on the right target, then swung to the left. The nose is then depressed to swing the fire back to the right. A further depression brings the impact line to within 400 feet of the aircraft while swinging left. Finally, fire is hosed down and up. On the 14th of February, 1972, at the invitation of the United States Navy, the CL-84 arrived at the Pentagon where it flew three demonstration flights. Winds gusting 25 to 30 knots served to show how well the 84 could operate under these conditions in a confined space. The aircraft is landing into the wind. Naval officers observed as the 84 rose from the 100-foot square helipad and carried out a demonstration beginning with hover turns. The turns end in a reversing sequence. At the end of the reverse, the 84 once again shows rapid acceleration during transition to conventional flight. Cleaned up, the return pass is considerably faster than aircraft normally operated from the Pentagon pad. A level inbound transition brings the 84 to hover into the wind over the pad. As the aircraft is turned out of the wind, you see the wing tilt angle being increased to accommodate the increasing tailwind. The wing is dropped to its normal ground angle of 15 degrees, providing ample ground clearance for the propellers. Eight days later, the CL-84 made its first landing aboard ship. After rendezvousing with the USS Guam, the interim sea control ship, 
some 15 miles off the Virginia coast, the 84's first approach was an intentional wave off following a policy of gradually coming closer on each pass to feel out the effects on the aircraft of the airflow around the ship. The Guam was steaming at five knots in a two to two and a half sea state with a wind over deck of 30 to 35 knots gusting to 40. This touch and go was followed by another similar and then two vertical touch and goes before coming round to its first vertical landing. Following a practice tie-down, the second flight began with a series of short takeoffs at different wing angles. At 40-degree wing tilt, the liftoff is almost immediate. At 30 degrees, some deck roll can be seen. And at 25 degrees, it still becomes airborne before the island at 70 knots airspeed. The following extended sequence serves to show the steadiness of the 84 in slow speed flight. Beginning with hover at the stern, the aircraft was slowly air taxied to the bow. The object was to further explore any local adverse turbulence around the superstructure, the edge of the deck, or the bow. The level fuselage obtainable at any wing angle provides the pilot with excellent visibility, allowing him to follow a flight path which passes close to the superstructure with confidence. The ship is still steaming at five knots, and as typical throughout the exercise, five to ten degrees to starboard of the wind. The air taxi finished with a vertical landing near the bow, followed by a vertical takeoff. This next landing was made with the ship heading 35 degrees out of the wind and the 84 landing vertically into the wind. A vertical takeoff and outbound transition close to the island preceded the last landing of this flight. A short landing with the ship back on the original heading. The 84 was again tied down, refueled, then moved to the stern at right angles to the ship for a takeoff into the wind as the Guam sailed into Hampton Roads Channel. The last liftoff was a vertical takeoff. The aircraft performed the airborne demonstration in a most successful manner, and this with a pilot with no previous deck landing experience. The final pass and salute to the Guam closes our pictorial record of some of the attributes and capabilities of a highly versatile aircraft, the CL-84 Tilt Wing Beastall.